Hello everyone, um, we hope you're staying safe during this uh, difficult time. So we obviously want to continue to teach you practical skills, um, but that's going to be quite difficult over the next few months. So what we're going to do is produce some videos for you to watch um, that you can watch in your own time and they'll give you some insight into some of the practical skills we would have taught you um, during Clinical Skills 2 and uh, we're going to try and teach you during Clinical Skills 3. We're hoping that you can put these into practice during Clinical Skills 3 and we're hoping that you find these useful. This first video is going to be about um, aseptic non-touch technique um, which is in itself essentially more of a, a concept or a, a package of um, making sure that um, if you're going to be doing a sterile procedure that you make sure that the um, procedure keeps a sterile procedure. Essentially it should be a technique that we all use as healthcare professionals, nurses, doctors, whoever, um, but someone has um, recognised this as a standard, a standard set of procedures, a standard set of rules and has packaged it as a deal and then sold it to many hospitals or all hospitals in the UK and so that if you go to hospital in Cardiff or in here in West Suffolk Hospital you'll be following the same procedures. There's the, fir the first thing you really need to think about if you're doing any kind of sterile procedure is can I perform this procedure um, and not touch any of the parts that need to remain sterile with my hands. If you can do that, you don't have to touch any of the parts that need to remain sterile with your hands, then you can go ahead and you can perform this procedure without touching any of those parts. This would be things like cannulation that we're going to be learning later, phlebotomy that you've already learnt, maybe ABGs, maybe things like that. If you can't perform this procedure, without touching the key or the sterile parts, um, for instance, for example, catheterization, you will then need to, before you start, lay out a formal sterile area, and then you can put all your sterile parts within this area and don sterile gloves, which you can then allow you to then touch all these key parts. So first of all, we're going to be talking about um, use, uh, a sterile procedure just without you wearing sterile gloves. So we're going to just show you drawing up a flush in order to flush an IV line, which is going to be play part of your cannulation that you're, that's coming up. So in order to draw up a flush or draw some saline into a syringe, so you can then flush it into someone's intravenous line, you'll need a syringe, you'll need a drawing up needle, and you'll need the actual um, drug itself, which is saline. If you give any drug to any patient via any route, you must first of all check five key things. The first one is the name of the drug, so this is sodium chloride, so I know it's the correct drug I'm drawing up. The next is the strength or the concentration of the drug, and this is 0.9%, which is the standard strength. After that, you need to check the route with which you're going to give it, so is it going to be orally, is it going to be uh, nasally. Um, this one is going to be intravenously, or it can be given subcutaneously via an injection under the skin. We then need to check the expiry date, and this one is in date, the 7th of July 19, um, 2021. And is it clean, dry and intact, and is there no bits floating around in it? Once we check those, then we can then definitely give that to a patient. If we're thinking about these, these two things that we're going to be drawing up, we need to make sure that we recognise what we call the key parts, and these are the parts that need to remain sterile. So currently inside this package, this syringe is completely sterile. So we need to then make sure that we identify on the syringe parts that need to remain sterile and parts that we can touch with our hands. So on this syringe, the part that needs to remain sterile is actually the tip of the syringe. And on this needle, um, we can touch the outside cover of the needle, we can't touch any part of the metal part or the plastic part of the needle. Before we actually go ahead and do this procedure, we need to make sure that we clean our hands. We can then um, collect an equipment tray that we're going to put everything in and we need to give that tray a good clean with the chosen wipe of your trust. Start on the inside first, make sure you get into all the corners and clean the tray and then we can clean the outside. And allow that to dry while you're getting your key parts. Okay, so once I've done that I then need to give my hands another clean and then I can start to open up my packages. So for the syringe, I'm going to open it part way. So I'm keeping most of the package sealed and place it into my tray. 
and find my needle, I'm going to open it again part way. I'm then going to take my syringe out of my package and only touch the very back of the syringe and connect that onto my needle. I then need to take the cover off of my needle and if I twist my needle in any way, the whole needle comes off the syringe. But if I make sure I keep my hands nice and still and I just give it a good pull without twisting it, the cover comes off and the needle stays onto the syringe. I'm then going to open up my flush, being careful not to drag my thumb over the opening. And I'm then going to use my needle and very carefully place it inside my um, flush and then pull back and draw back all of the liquid that is inside the container. Once I've done that, I'm then going to place that down. I'm going to look at my syringe and look to see if there's any air bubbles. And if there are any air bubbles, I'm just going to knock it, the syringe, until some of the air bubbles float to the surface and then I'm going to expel all the air that is in this syringe. Once I've done that, I can then very carefully touch the needle now, because I don't need it anymore, take it off without touching any part of the spout of the um, syringe there and place it into my sharp spin. I can then place my syringe back into my packet, because inside my packet is sterile, and then my syringe there is all inside there, it's nice and sterile, and then I can then use it to give my patient an intravenous drug. Alternatively, I could find a sterile red bun and place that onto the spout of the needle, which would keep it equally as sterile, and it just depends on where you're working and what they actually do. So that's um, aseptic non-touch technique, um, when I can actually perform the procedure without touching any of the key parts.